Welcome to another lesson. This time I'm going to be showing you Sibelius's advanced filter. And this can be found under the home tab next to the regular filter. Now you probably won't need this filter as much as you need the regular filter, but I highly recommend that you learn to use it because in particular circumstances it can save you a heck of a lot of time. So I'm just going to open it up. The shortcut is Control alt shift f and you can see that it's quite a complex little window. There's a lot of stuff in here. Down the left-hand side, I can choose what I would like to select. I have notes and chords, rests, text, lines, clefs, and symbols. And for each of these, I can set the search parameters to single out very specific things. For example, let's say that I want to select all of the staccato accented Cs in my score. I first make sure that on the left hand side I have notes and chords selected. On the right hand side I then go to pitch and select single, meaning that I only want one particular pitch. And you can see directly under that that I could also select pitches within a given range if I wanted to. I then select the exact pitch I want, in this case the pitch C. The octave doesn't matter. I can also select whether it should just be a sounding C or a written C for transposing instruments. And now that I've selected the specific tone that I want, I want to be specific about those tones' accents. So down the bottom, I only want pitches that are both staccato and accented. So under articulation, I first have to click all selected required, meaning that they have to have all of the accents that I select. I then tick the staccato and accent boxes. You can see that just above that, I could have also selected a very specific rhythmic value if I wanted to. And up the top, I could also search through not only the normal notes, but also the grace notes and the tuplets if I wanted. And so when I finally hit select, all of the staccato accented Cs in my score will be selected. And I don't have to do this for the entire score. I could also just select a passage in my score and then run the filter just for that particular passage. So something like this can be useful because sometimes when reviewing and looking over something, you might decide to make a change that affects a lot of the score. For example, here, if I suddenly decide, oh, I actually don't want the accented notes to also be staccato, I can select them all with my filter as I just did. And then with just one keystroke, turn off the staccato. And for larger passages, this is of course so much quicker than doing everything manually, going through and changing every individual note. But allow me to now show you another very real world example. In the next example I've got here, I have a lot of copy pasted dynamics that stretch for quite some time. Now let's say that while going over the piece I decide, wow, actually forte is probably going to be a bit too much. I'd actually rather just a solid mezzo forte instead. The problem in this particular example is that changing it manually is going to take quite some time. In fact, even copy paste would be quite time consuming because you can see that the pattern that things are repeating is quite irregular. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is obviously to select the staves I need. I'll then open up my advanced filter again. And this time I'm going to select just text and turn off notes and chords. And now that we're in the text section of the window, you can see that we can search through all text types or we can do a search just for a very specific text type. For example, expression. And if I were to leave it like this, this would select all of the expression text fields in my document. But of course, I need to be more specific because I just want to select the text fields that have fortes in them. So up the top, I can do a search just for text fields that contain the letter F. And now that I have my fortes selected, as you're probably aware, the latest versions of Sibelius allow us to edit multiple text fields simultaneously. So if I hit enter or double click while they're all selected, I can then change all of them to mezzo forte in one blow, saving me an awful amount of time. Do note, however, that the filter is looking for the letter F in any expression text field. So if I were to run the filter again, it would select my MFs now because they contain the letter F. 
So when you're advanced filtering these sorts of dynamics, you still have to be a little bit clever as to how you go about things. Now, another really amazing thing is that this filter can also select a note based on its position in a bar. So if I open up the advanced filter again and then select notes and chords again, first I have to change my pitch back to any and also change my articulation back to any. If I then go to position in bar and select specific position, I can then select a rhythmic value. And what this means is that in each bar, the filter will select the tone directly following the rhythmic value that I enter. So if I enter in a quarter note and hit select, you can see that in every single bar in the piece, any notes directly following a quarter note length have been selected. So in this particular case, the third eighth note of each bar. If I go back to the filter and change its settings so that it now looks for the notes after a dotted quarter note and then do the search again, you'll see that now the fourth eighth note of each bar has been selected. So this actually has many practical applications, particularly if your music has a lot of very similar repetitions, like an underlying groove or riff. For example, if you're working on a drum part and you realize that you have to change every second eighth note into a crossed note head, for example. So this filter is a very powerful tool. And if you ever come across a problem where you have to change a bulk of very similar material, I would suggest trying to fix it using the advanced filter. You might be surprised at how much time it can save you. Now, there is one other very handy thing that the filter can do, and that is to find very specific things that you can't easily find or have somehow lost or misplaced. And this could be literally anything, text, lines, symbols, even objects that are hidden. So just for the sake of an example, I'm going to place a do not copy symbol somewhere randomly in my score, and then I'm going to hide it and scroll randomly away. Now, I wasn't paying attention to where I placed it, so it's as good as lost for the moment. I've got no idea where it is in the score. But with the advanced filter, it's really easy to find again. So if I open it up and select this time symbols and then select the specific symbol that I'm searching for, there it is, no problem. Now, this can be handy because we all know that when we're creating scores, we often leave little artifacts lying around. For example, little comments or notes or particular objects to help with the playback. And this filter can help just double check that we've either hidden or removed all of the things that shouldn't be there for printing. So as I said, I highly recommend checking this out. It's a very overlooked Sibelius tool, but it's actually incredibly useful and very time-saving when it's used correctly.